Okay, now you can hear me. Sorry, I guess. Um, okay, cool. Well, you didn't miss anything important. I was just saying hello. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining me. And uh, you should be hearing me loud and clear now. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but that used to be <laughs> my mic used to be a constant struggle. But uh, it has been a while since we've had uh, whole songs of me talking without realizing the mic's on, and that's that's because I've I've reworked uh, the whole setup. Uh, yeah, Kelly, your time is perfect because I'm running late. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, if, you're, if this is your first time watching, I've actually done a better job about starting on time, except for this last week's jam, but things happen. Uh, it's just me uh, putting all this together, and uh, and I think maybe next week I'll give you guys a look at what the whole system uh, looks like now, but it is, uh, it's pretty complicated. Uh, but it's, uh, hey, Kyla, sweet. Um, thank you guys for saying, hey, you don't have to. But I love it when you do. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever wanted to check out a live stream, but you've been afraid that because you know who's hosting the live stream that, like, you dipping out might look weird if it's not your jam. So one thing you can know, uh, and maybe I'm revealing just <laughs> how insecure I get me sometimes about social things. <laughs> I can't see who's in the rooms and who's not in the rooms. So, you know, you can take whatever you need. And, um, and if, you know, if, if the class is headed in a place that you just think that's not right for you, uh, that's the beauty of online streaming. And you can dip out and, you know, you can take as much of the class as you want to. So uh, speaking of all that, on Thursday will mark the official one-year anniversary from the very first class that I ever taught. I keep dropping things. Um, from the very first class that I taught until now, it's been one year. And I wish I could say that I thought of this idea on my own, but I did not. Uh, Tara, who's over there petting Rex right now, she had expressed, oh, hello, Danielle. She had expressed that maybe I should do uh, an online something, and I wasn't uh, so sure about it. And then I think it was Varushka or someone like that from Toronto, or not someone like that, but I think it was Varushka. I think it was somebody from Toronto is what I mean. And she suggested that uh, maybe I do an online sway, and I just decided to do a class. And, you know, we were all, you know, we were so unsure about what the pandemic was going to do that it blew up. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was a trip. <laughs> it's definitely the most viewers I've ever had, and I, that was expected. Um, technically, it was like as far as the smoothness of it, it was a total disaster. I had no idea what I was doing. And so, you know, even though I know that some of those viewers will probably uh, never make their way back, um, that was the start. And I hope that you've seen the work uh, that I'm putting in on this. Um, I'm trying not to tweak too much at this point, but just work on little subtle details. And if you're watching on Facebook, the absolute best place to watch is YouTube or Twitch. I guess the absolute best, but it's YouTube or Twitch, and it's at Hoop Pathbacks. Uh, yeah, I love the Canadians. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, since we are running a little bit late, um, oh, I want to say something. So because it's our one-year anniversary, on Thursday night, I'm going to do some kind of fun class. I'm not exactly sure. And then after that class, I'm going to do a birthday jam for the class. Just play music, hoop myself. I'll probably pop a beer, that sort of thing. And just have fun. And maybe the West Coast, some West Coast friends of mine can show up on the Zoom wall. I'm going to have the Zoom wall up. Uh, I think we're going to do the Zoom wall for the class. Uh, that's not going to be a regular thing. I, 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 th I don't like too much complication back there. So anyway, um, let me jump straight into uh, the class. So this Monday night class is the what I consider the advanced or intermediate to advanced. And when I say intermediate to advanced, what I really mean is within the hoop path so that you, you know, have learned to shoulder hoop or you, ha you, know, you know what a paddle is, you know what a break is. Now, I'm very aware that there are beginners, especially, shout out to my replay community. I want you guys to know that I know that you're there because I see what you do <laughs> and your comments. So thank you and your messages, uh, especially in Europe. A lot of you are watching on replay. You're a part of this stream. I just want to make sure that you know that. So, um, where was I? T 
Uh, sorry, sometimes reading the comments throws me off. Uh, yeah, so anyway, that will be what we're doing uh, for Thursday. Uh, I'm going to try to invite some friends. I'm going to see if I can get, you know, s some people to show up on the Zoom wall with me. So anyway, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, and then, of course, Sunday we'll have the jam. So tonight we're going to talk about... Oh, yeah, and there will not be a jam on Sunday. I should say, let me say that one more time. I'm so excited about the, f the material that we're getting to. I'm kind of blasting through this. Thursday, class, birthday jam for the stream. No jam on Sunday. No jam on Sunday. So, um, you know, maybe y'all could do the Zoom room thing with K-Swift, uh, but that's up to you guys. But there, I will not be hosting or be able to be a part of uh, any sort of hoop-related thing on Sunday. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I think rather, since we're kind of getting a little bit late start here, uh, I prefer to start around 7.10, so I want to make up for this. We're just going to jump straight in. Um, and as always, guys, thank you for joining me. Yeah, okay, this will work. Oh, actually, sorry, I changed my mind on that one. Yeah, this will work. Okay. All right. you in your sway tonight as you open and move to bring both your awareness and your focus to the hands. You can imagine that if you were in a completely dark room, one where you can't see from one wall to the next, Imagine that only your hands are glowing. Even if you're stretching or not using your hands, see them as glowing. Audible breath in. I invite you to try a fun exercise with me. 
where you imagine that just like you can blow on a coal and it glows brighter, I want you to imagine that your breath in and out causes your hands to glow brighter. So I'll do it with you. If I say audible breath in, audible breath in, hands bright, audible breath out, and I can even imagine my hands kind of dimming as the breath goes out, big breath in, full brightness, breath out. Sure, you see your non dominant hand as they glow. Open, open. stretches, lengthening through the body. Okay, so the uh, music tonight is coming through my sound, I mean my iTunes, so there is no playlist after that. And let's go ahead and jump in here to our class, and we're going to start tonight with uh, point technique. We're going to get into paddles, two point, and then, uh, oh shucks, I forgot the third thing. Paddles, two point, folding. and folding, of course folding, yeah. So all this is going to go together. We're probably going to work our way backwards. We're going to go from two point to folding. All right, and so this is going to be a technique class, and usually when I do these, I just play like sort of one song so that I can just sort of keep talking to you. Uh, if you're looking for a flow class, uh, this is not that. <laughs> Sorry, I did have this tuned up for you. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is actually a mix that you can go get, and it is uh, on SoundCloud for free. You can download it. Calls it for her. Okay, so we're going to start with point technique tonight. Okay. Point technique. The cool thing about teaching for so many years on the road was that I could just say point technique and everybody that had had me multiple times <laughs> in classes would just start moving. They just knew. And th ultimately, that's sort of the goal of our teaching here. 
is that I just say point technique like saying go there and you make your way to the point field of the festival. Point technique is when I hold the hoop without grip and I hang the hoop. The original inspiration for point technique, uh, for me, Jonathan, was I took Tai Chi classes because I thought it would help with my balance for hooping, and it did. And I wasn't crazy about doing a sequence, but I love the idea of slow exploration. Now, I'll be honest, you have to be a pretty heavy movement geek to like point technique. Imagining that everyone here is. Point technique for the most part takes three forms. Hanging, which is what I'm doing now. Flying, which is when I spin fast enough that the point, the opposite point of the hoop, it's going to lift a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat, just it lifts. That's how you know it's flying. Even if it moves just barely, even a little bit, then you are flying the hoop. And then there's also standing, and that's balance. We're gonna work on that later. And right now, what I want you to focus on, if you can, is hanging point with a little bit of fly. Maybe the music could up a little bit. Now, since this is Monday, I just know this audience. And there's little things that advanced troopers can start to focus on that will really grow the way it looks and the way it feels. And that is to think about what I call the non-obvious places. One of those non-obvious places can be the other hand. So as I move in point technique, what's the other hand doing? If you've ever done flow wands, you know that the whole thing is sold. The whole thing looks badass. The illusion is created by movement of the other hand. Now I can pass in flying or in hanging point, I can pass to the other hand. If I'm flying the hoop, I'm spinning, I just, that's an easy pass. But I can also like pass to the inside of the hoop if I wanted to. So I'm outside, I can pass to the inside. And then if I stop, it'll move into a nice hang. As you get deeper and deeper, as you get geekier and geekier in point technique, it can be the space between the hanging and the flying that you have the most fun with. You can make your passes right there, right as it's flying. But I'm gonna pass up into a hang. Flying again, push up into a hang. If I push the hoop, it hangs. That's one way to, flat to flatten it to you. Anytime I push up with my hands, the hoop's gonna flatten. Nice, see? though, if you can, is to stay, stay in point technique tonight. 
and that means to not grip the hoop. If it touches the palm at all, you can just fan the hand's fingers out. It's kind of like a way of showing the other hoop pathers you're still in point technique, right? The palms are totally allowed in point. I mean, there's no rules, but palms are totally allowed. But when you move to the palm, it's like you style it to show that I am not gripping it. I'm just letting it be on that surface. The whole idea of point technique is that you are not gripping it. Okay? Gripping's awesome. We have a whole category of hooping that involves gripping called warrior in the hoop path. But tonight is about point technique. how to do this double uh, paddle here where I've got both. If I want to flatten that out even more, I just push my hands up. Right? As soon as I make contact, if I push up, it flattens it almost immediately. Contact. Oh, actually, I wanted to start with smears first. So we're going to create our second point in a kind of different way than we might normally. Uh, what we're going to do this time is it will be like two or three point, honestly. We're going to hang, put the hoop in a hang. Inside of it, outside of it, doesn't matter. And I'm going to go and hug the hoop, just bring my hand towards it. Let this hand stay up here, and the hoop is going to fold out. Okay? So I'm here, and I'm going to hug it to me. Now, this is not a move in and of itself this is an introduction to an idea and the idea is that i'm creating a pivot point with one hand that, and then push with my arm from the other hand okay so i'm here and this gets us into a two-point fold push up into hanging, and then pull, hug towards me. Good. I'll give you a little pro tip. That point of contact that the hoop is making that's not your hands, like the, the sort of third smear point, that becomes a really helpful uh, focal point because you start to really feel nuance of the hoop. using Tara kind of as my, my my gauge here so she's she's getting this pretty well uh, of course she's done it before but she's getting it pretty well so I'm gonna go ahead and move to one more area now at any point you guys could, of course can veer off you know Jackie Hula Cat has had this folding she's had more workshops from me than probably anybody <laughs> and so I would imagine if we were in a workshop space Jackie would be off doing all kinds of cool two or three point folds and of course you can do that as well but if I am here and I do hug the hoop towards me and it comes in, as it comes in, I am creating three points of contact. I've got a point on my stomach, or, you know? I've got a point on this hand right here, and then I have a point up here, okay? So there are three points, one, two, three. And then when I'm here, I can take this top hand, <coughs> so the hoop is against me it's in front of me against me 
and I've got three points, and I can use this top hand to create a lot of force on the hoop, right? And then as I have that force there, I can start to do these cool two-point folds where the hoop folds all the way around me. So this is the, this is the lever you want to create first. You see how my, my bottom hand is actually on the inside of the hoop, which is not what we usually do for two-point. It's on the inside, top hand's bouncing it back and forth. Then I come up, that same, remember we push up to create flat. So I'm here, I push up, and then I come back down, hug, Uh, Jennifer, you're here. Sweet. This is one of our tech classes tonight. This is about as techy as hoop path gets, which is not extremely techy, but I think Jennifer and I kind of hoop with the same spirit. So I'm here. So I'm, crea I'm coming out of this lever here and pushing up. Now, the reason I'm showing you the, the usually when I teach a move, the reason I'm teaching it is not because it's that fa fantastic, but it opens up a way of thinking and moving with the hoop. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm grounding into my core, this third point, the, Kyla, the thing Kyla just asked about, about the smear. This smear point becomes a nice grounding for me. Do you see how I'm, I'm kind of tucking it into me? It could be my stomach, you know, for me it could be my chest, or it could be a hip. You know, your mileage may vary because of your hoop size. Swift's got the Zoom room open if you guys want to join them. Good. Now, I like to sometimes use, this is, we're getting geeky tonight, I like to use my wrist sometimes for this move, so that when I'm here, the hoop is, is more or less on my wrist. There's certain moves, not for everybody, but there's certain, I don't want to, F you up, but like if, you're, if you had it, I don't want to mess you up with that suggestion, but for some people. Okay, now in between this move, so let's, let's say we're here, right? You see how I'm sort of inside the hoop here? I'll show you an old school fold that we used to do. Now this is more of a three point fold. I'm gonna bring the hoop down, right? A three point fold. I'm gonna bring it down, push my arms out like this, and you'll immediately feel the hoop kind of rise. As it rises, you're going to push your shoulders, just imagine your shoulders dipping over the hoop a little bit, continue to raise the hands, and you'll fold out of the hoop. Okay? So we're just doing this again. I'm here, I come up here, I can let the hoop go, and then fold, create that fold there. So I'm here, I'll show it from this side. way you can work on your reaction time with this exercise and I can fold up put a little bit of toss on the hoop and then jump into double point it looks kind of like this go up oh <laughs> I hit my lights all right so here I'll try it this way I'm gonna come up get it in double point let's see if I can do this without hitting my lights here so I'm gonna come up I'm in double point boom, boom, boom. all right and then I can take this same move. Let's say I don't want to go like completely over. If I dip a hand, like if I, I can, or if I dip me, then I can kind of go more to the side. I don't know if I'm not that flexible right now because my back has been weird lately. But, and so my point is just that you can kind of create. And then if I want to add a little bit of gooey, I can put some gooey on this you know, and just stay connected to it the whole time. Use your chin, whatever. You know, your hoop, again, hooping is always a mileage, well, your mileage may vary type idea. Now I guess I, I don't know if it's worth mentioning or not, 
but you know how we do that door knocker into balance? I could just go ahead and door knocker all the way into that move, right? Do you see that? So I swing it out, but instead of swinging it up into a balance, I'll just go ahead and swing it all the way right to that. All right, I'm gonna shut up and let you guys practice this a little bit. be three points of contact, but I'm just going to use two for the most part, right? And then if you want to work on this as a drill, you can bounce back and forth. See that? It's still pivot and push in a way. The pivot points are my thigh and I guess my upper arm or wherever it lands. I can go all the way around like backpack it or whatever. free hoop right at 8 o'clock if you have to dip out I understand but I want to make up that five minutes that we lost there bit more two point but not what I'm really wanting to work on tonight is, is not sort of so much the traditional two point but more two point on the core right so we've been working with this core this uh, push and this smear move but now what I want to do is try one more uh, movement now this one's some of you have kind of already been doing this we have taught this before um, but this is a good way to feel two-point, like true two-point folding. So I'm going to lay the hoop against me just like this. I'm going to bring my hands down and then I'm going to fold them out. Like I'm going to put them out. The hoop path language is a little confusing sometimes, but this is also called a fold. Even though I'm not, it's, there's a noun fold, it just means you're... you're in the regular flow world, they call them locks, but I didn't know that when they were called that way. So I'm here with this, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my hands up right and let the hoop roll hang now, the whole secret to this move is the hang in the back you want it to hang right so this is a two-point fold and you might not realize it but what's happening i mean there's a couple of ways that it's folding but the, the biggest one is that here this is when it becomes a fold you see how my hands are going to change height or change position in order to make it around boom fold Fold, fold, now Jackie's done this with me, maybe Jennifer's done it too, but you can do some cool, we used to do this stuff called sparring, it sounds violent, but it's really not violent, but we would do warrior, we called it engagement, and this was a great engagement move, and I'll show you why. Because engagement was when you would you would click and make noise with another hooper's hoop, right? And uh, actually, Tara, can I borrow you for a second? Come over here just for a second. So take two seconds. I'm breaking our agreement. So just hold your hoop flat. You don't have to do anything with it. Just hold it. Okay. So like this engagement move that I'm talking about. So I'm in this movement here, 
as I bring it down here, when I would normally go through and do the fold, instead of doing that, I can fold my hands out, right? You see the sort of position I have there? I'll do it with both. And when I do that, it will stop the hoop, okay? So I'm here, I'm gonna fold my hands out. So that top hand, see how I'm not clicking her hoop? Now I am gonna click it, but I'm not gonna click it hard. That's what happens if I go all the way through it, right? So I can use this moment, and then if I just, we used to, and we didn't want to beat the hell out of each other, so we would just do these light clicks, right? And then once she gets this, I don't want to spring her on it, but that's the sort of engagement model. Okay, thanks. So, uh, <laughs> Lindsay, you and Anastasia had some <laughs> incredible, uh, whatever you would call it, non-battle battle. battle. <laughs> uh, dances, dances, that's what it is. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you some of these techniques combined, the ones I've already told you. This is me flaring the hands out. You see that? I'm I keep one elbow high and I flare the hands out. You'll feel it in a nice, cool, you'll feel this sort of point pressure on the back of your hand as it folds out and stops. The too fast. Again, like the other things we've been working on, this is just a chance to learn something, you know? Like, like this is not the whole move in and of itself, but you're teaching, you know, like I'm a total improv hooper, right? So you're teaching your hand how to stop and do things. This is the fold that I was talking about. This was the stop. You see how my hands are not switching positions. saw the replay but I featured you uh, during the jam and you were going off it was towards the beginning I don't know if you saw it but it was really cool I, was, I hope you guys don't mind me featuring you but uh -oh. it's just cool to see you guys in a bigger box okay so we are gonna do one more one more two-point uh, folding type thing this one might be a little bit harder, okay? But we're gonna go into our regular two-point position here, okay? So this is our regular two-point. My top hand is on the inside wall. I'm not regular, I guess you would say this is the formal or you know, the stylized version or whatever. So my hand's on the inside, my bottom hand is on the outside. And then this is a super simple move. Again, it's just a, it's a, it's a gateway move, right? It's a concept to open up other things in you. But I can use this two-point position as a way to come onto the body by pulling my top hand back and pushing the bottom hand out, right? So like pushing out. And so what that does is it folds the hoop onto me, right? So I'm here, I'm holding the hoop, so I'll just, I'll be super deliberate. I'm on my right hand, okay? My right hand's gonna push back, right? My left hand though is going to sort of make its way around my elbow, right? Boom, okay? 
Now, I, it, sometimes it helps to stay as gooey as you can through this move, right? Stay gooey. By that, I mean you stay sticky, right? So I don't want to lose the hoop at all if I can. I want to stay stuck to it through the whole thing. So we'll set it up one more time. Uh, I'll do my right hand. Maybe it'll help if I'm behind. So I'm on my right hand is up on top. My left hand's on the bottom. My right hand's going to come up over my head as my left hand starts to push out. And that will fold the hoop onto me. Okay. So I'm in two-point technique again. I'll do it for the left handies if just in, or left-handers just in case it makes it it shouldn't make a difference really. But now my left hand's on top, my right hand is pushing out, okay? So as my left hand comes back, my right hand, I don't get too far away from the body. I guess I should point that out. So I'm gonna bring the hoop kind of close. My left hand is gonna come back. Yeah, my left hand's gonna come over my head as my right hand pushes out just a little bit and that's gonna fold the hoop, right? I'll try to do this at more like your, the speed that you'll you'll be at when you learn it, and it's pretty fun. If it helps you to think about it this way, it's like you're sort of transitioning the hoop on, well, you're just sort of moving inside of the hoop. This is essentially like sort of the contact version of a drop-in. And I'll shut up and let you guys practice it. Thank you, Kyla. And Thursday will be our birthday party. Okay. So I'm going to kind of switch directions right now. I hope this is okay. And let's see, where are we at here? And we're going to pick up and go onto the core for just a second here because I want to talk a little bit about paddling since I promised that. So I'm on the waist. We're going to do a quick warm up together here, guys. I'm on the waist. Oops. There we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm on the waist. You don't have to uh, stick to my guidance. We're just going to warm the core up before we talk about cores on the panel or cores or paddling off the core. There's a couple of things you can do, though. As you start to warm up, like once you start, it takes a minute, right? This is the, <laughs> this is the slowest to warm up, right? The core. So you're going to find this core, and then you're going to start to add some hands to it, right? I can see myself in the monitor, so it's a little bit easier for me. If you have a mirror, sometimes it helps. But otherwise, you're just going to try to move your hands as you're warming up the core. it just to warm up both sides make sure our, our throwing side is getting a chance to catch and our catching side is getting a chance to throw. And I'm staying rooted which means my feet are staying in the same spot but you could be moving around whatever you'll get the same benefit from this exercise. Now we're going to come up to the shoulders. And I'm imagining that most of you know how to shoulder hoop. Uh, if you don't, go to some of my classes and look back in my library or find some friend. Uh, but I've covered shoulder hooping kind of a lot. Uh, we can do it again sometime, but that's more of a Thursday night sort of thing. But one of the things you want to work on once you get it is your non-dominant side awareness. That's really one of the things that helps you flatten, sort of get rid of the awkward of your shoulder hooping. So I'm right-handed. So 
so a great exercise for me for working on my shoulders is to just bring my awareness to only my left side. Whatever current I'm in doesn't really even matter. I'm just bringing it to my left side. And then, I don't know why I started calling it, but next we're going to do something I call putting hands, <laughs> putting hands on the hoop. It doesn't mean you're actually going to put hands on, but you're going to start to introduce your hands to the hoop, hoop's current. But because we're working on paddles, we don't want to disrupt the current. So what we want to do is develop like a super light touch that does not break the rhythm of the hoop at all, okay? And there's two surfaces that we can develop this touch on. It can be on the inside where I push out. These are traditional paddles. And then this isn't really so much a paddle, but this is, <laughs> I'm using a lot of fight terms tonight, but it would be like a feint. And this is where I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make contact with the hoop, but it's gonna be on the outside of the wall, and it's just gonna like kiss it and let the hoop go on. Okay, so it looks kinda like this. I'll just do one on the left. You see that? I'm going, I'm just letting it make contact with my hand, but I'm not stopping it. Of course, if you do too many of these, you might kill the momentum of the hoop. This is a one, two, one, two, and that actually can become a, a true paddle. One, two. See how I'm not reversing it, because I'm not stopping the hoop. Now you might say, well, Bax, are these even paddles? Well, they can be, because you can use the outside surface, especially when I'm using my, uh, I guess my first three hand, to push the hoop around from the outside wall, right? So I'm here, but this is pushing from the inside wall. But this would be me pushing, I'm really using my, my second tree, my PM hand, to kind of slow the hoop up and set up the push coming from the outside. So I'm going to the left, my left hand is kind of making contact first, and then my right hand is coming to push it along, right? It's almost like I'm, I'm setting up the hoop with my left and then pushing it with my right. If I want to do this the other way, I'd be setting it up with my right hand and pushing it with my left. Setting it up with my right, pushing. And by setting it up, I mean I'm making contact on the outside wall, but I'm not stopping it. Absolutely. That's kind of the whole point, John. I'm glad you said that. Is that what grip is supposed to do, what it's really supposed to do for everybody, is it's supposed to, or the grip not using grip, is just create new potentials, right? New possibilities. Okay. Since we're almost out of time, I want to do this one more thing and then we'll, I'll free hoop for about 10 minutes for you guys, or we will free hoop for 10 minutes. Okay, so I'll pull the music down just a little bit. Okay, so we're going just to tie everything together. Remember when I said that, you know, if I push up with my hands, right, the hoop is going to drop, okay? But what we're going to do right now is to not, yeah. Use a really big hoop. <laughs> and a lot of dudes, it, I think a lot of dudes, I'm talking to Case with right now, but you can get really tight through the chest in the back. Um, and, you know, that, uh, a, lot, a lot of us aren't that supple there. You're welcome, Danielle. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to say was that uh, as I'm here and I'm doing these paddles, I can push up, right? Push up, and that's a lift. I'm here. I'm paddling, I just push up and the hoop comes off. Now what we're gonna do to tie all this in is once I push it off, I'm gonna go in with those two uh, double point positions and fold, okay? And I'll show you how it looks. I'm here, I'm gonna push up and then I'm gonna fold and let this hoop, see how I'm back in that move? I'm turning to pull it off just cause I want to. And then I don't get dizzy anymore, but you can kind of fold if you don't get dizzy, you can fold, you know, while turning. 
And then if I want to reverse using that, that move that we talked about, with the flaring of the hand. So I'm here on my hoop. I'm paddling. I push up, I'm off, and I'm down. That's that move I just showed you. overwhelmed you. Jennifer just said, <laughs> Ted, I never teach this much tech, uh, but it's been a while. I, I do like to teach it, but, uh, it, you know, this is particularly a uh, heavy tech class. <laughs> okay, so there's, there's one more thing that I'm going to show you. This is pretty much just for people that have had multiple workshops and have done these things. And I've, just got, I've done this before, but I'll just show you again. So this is the move where we were doing this here, right? doing this here. Now, if I come up and do that folded out hand thing, I can turn and flip the hoop. So I'm here. I'm going to bring the hoop towards me, keep the hand high, and then tip it, right? I'll show you. I'm here. I'm here. And then tip it back over by get catching at the top. Uh, sweet. That's a great idea, too. <laughs> I can always tell how much someone, well, not the only way, but one way you can tell how much somebody loves hooping or anything that they're working on is they throw yet to the end of everything they can't do. I can't shoulder hoop yet. I can't get that yet. And you can just tell if they're using that word yet that they really love what they're doing. <laughs> some free hoop time. Normally we would try to be wrapping up by now, but uh, again, thank you guys so much for your uh, participation. Thursday night will be our uh, uh, will be our class, and then the jam if you want to stick around. I really just want to do it, so uh, there won't be a jam on Sunday, guys. It will not be a jam on Sunday, so. do some old folding songs. Hopefully this won't get us kicked off. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I super duper appreciate it. Sweet, Kelly. Congratulations. First day of spring break. I wouldn't go to Miami if I were you. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, you should definitely plan to call in. Uh, someone just donated. Thank you guys so much. for like literally five years straight. I taught samurai and people didn't know what to do. <laughs> uh, more donations. Thank you guys. I really appreciate that. I don't like to talk about it because it just feels I have trouble with money, but I really, truly appreciate <laughs> those. You're welcome, everybody. Have a great night. We'll play this song and then maybe uh, maybe one down, one more to chill things out. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Let's have some champagne together. (laughs) 